Gorgeous morning here. Good morning, everyone. Our first frost for 2022. Later than normal. I don't know that there's a normal anymore, but um, usually it's early to mid-September here. Um, we're basically October now. Last year, it wasn't until almost mid-October, which was amazing. That was about the latest in a long, long time. We probably got down to 28, 29. Um, not bad. It was like, it frosted by almost, by about midnight. So I thought it was going to be basically a freeze, um, which it wasn't. I covered everything up that mattered, which almost is nothing at this point. It stayed above freezing in the greenhouse. So my cherry tomatoes, sun golds are still fine, I believe, because uh, the ground's still warm in there. The change in temperature, the delta T between inside that greenhouse and outside is only um, like one to three degrees once the ground gets cold, but the ground's still pretty warm in there. So the change in temperature can be um, much higher. Like it could have been at least 40 in there last night, even though, so that's like, you know, 12 degree change in T. But here's an interesting thing I just saw. So, buckwheat cover crop, occlusion of a weedy strawberry bed next to the some of my heirloom apple nursery, grafted apples. So I've got my, kind of sorry, uh, it could be worse, um, fall carrot bed here. They're doing nicely. The, the sewing was ha very haphazard, so they're not in rows, but they're, they're doing good. They're sized up. Um, we sowed them later than normal. Normally it has to be about mid-June, our most important crop, you know, sown in mid-June, because that's the winter storage crop. And um, I didn't quite thin them all. Did I? Er, yeah, that's one. Okay, good. I've been thinning carrots is like total pain in the butt. I put a lot of time into it. You just have to do it or you have to sew better than I do. Um, so anyway, they're doing pretty good. You can see the sizes of some of them, but here's the path. Here's a carrot that got sewn in the path, as happens. And I used to be all about soil decompaction. Look at that. Um, right, broad forking continuously, John Jevons style stuff. And I think when I was on clay soil more, that must that made a bigger difference. Here, what I'm seeing in our newer garden, which is on sandy loam, let's see what this at, carrot looks like. Okay, so it's not quite as deep as a lot of the carrots in this bed, but that's a perfectly serviceable carrot. It's in the path. Maybe it's not in the middle of the path, but it's not where I've decompacted and put a ton of time into, well, much more time into than here. So what I'm finding over the years is that soil decompaction and soil compaction is just overrated. If you're on sandy loam, on clay, maybe it's not, but the whole idea of double digging seems pretty crazy to me the crazier the longer i garden it seems like more and more whacked of an idea now again maybe in the right context which i think john jevons and those guys have worked in or focused on which is where space is super limited not my context not my not most any rural person's context at least in this country um time is our limiting factor not space um but if you're in an urban you know, you're farming on, gardening on terrible stuff, clay stuff, then maybe that makes sense. But the more space you have and the lighter your soil has is, the, the less of a value proposition that is to do like crazy soil, deep soil work, and just, you know, plant more food, um, put down more compost. You know, there's probably a lot of ways to get, to get further along. But um, anyway, it's just something I've been noticing over the years. I've seen all sorts of plants. You know, I've pl seen plenty of lettuce and chard and stuff like that do it perfectly fine in the in the paths. You know, maybe they're 80% smaller. Okay, but they took, you know, 5% of the work. Um, but to see a root do this well in a path. Now, 
granted, we treat our paths pretty well. I mean, I, I wood chip them a lot. I mulch them, but still, they're not. They've never been forked. They've never been decompacted. So, um, yeah, it's uh, interesting. Um, this is a new bed. This is super dry, super droughty. So we're we're making a go at some lavender here on the south side of our greenhouse. But it stuff just droughts out here. I've put squash here and I've watered them and they still die. And so I dumped a full seven yards of pretty rotting moving along towards soil wood chips here. And um, we're going to plant through that in the spring. I'm not sure what yet. Maybe it'll be some more raspberries. Rubus is a little sketchy to put close to zone one gardens. You know, they move a bit, but they can take the drought. So, um, you know, we'll see. But uh, something dry loving could be more lavender. We don't really need much lavender. So I don't know why I would have, you know, 20 by 20 lavender. But um, if any of you guys have any ideas, dry loving spot. Um, I don't really need more berries. That's for sure. Um, maybe there's some specific herbs, which we could use more of that can take it really dry. Um, I don't know. Mediterranean, maybe just thyme. can always use more time for the bees just like, but now it's mulched. So that's not really going to happen next spring. Anyway, hope you guys are doing well with the first frost wherever, if it's coming around to where you are, or maybe you're in the Southern hemisphere and you're moving the opposite direction. Oh, one little cool thing. Here is a earth-sheltered cold frame with a five-wall polycarb top. I'll do a video about that. Um, we're entering our second winter, so I haven't had much to say about it yet because one winter, that's not that much experience. I'd like to get through two, three winters to really see how it's behaving, but I think it might be a good solution. At the same time, it has a lot of disadvantages that cold frames tend to as well. It is big, it's four by 12. So that takes care of some of the disadvantages of extreme disadvantages I found with cold frames starting 20 to 15 years ago while I, I mostly abandoned them. But uh, we'll see, I'll try to dig into that with you guys in the next six months, maybe less. See ya.